الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد The ruling on جعالة with some of the ulama الجعالة and in English this is commission based work If you are able to fulfill a particular task you will then receive payment for it If you are not able to then you receive nothing If you're able to paint my wall I'll give you a hundred pounds If you don't do it then you receive nothing now there is no difference of opinion between the one and that this is something which is permissible. All the madhabs are agreed. In actual fact, the delil for it is found in the Quran in Surah Yusuf in two separate incidents. Yusuf's stepbrothers, they come from Sham because there's a drought and there's you know economic um, constraints in Sham. So they've come to Egypt because Egypt is prosperous. So they've entered into Yusuf. Yusuf recognizes them, but they don't recognize him. And he knows that there's a brother, their stepbrother, Benjamin, who's missing. وَجَاءَ إِخْوَةُ يُوسُفِ فَدَخْلُوا عَلَيْهِ فَعَرَفَهُمْ وَهُمْ لَهُمْ مُنْكِرُونَ He recognizes them. They don't recognize him. He knows there is one missing. So he asks them, Have you got another brother? Have you got another sibling? They say, yeah, we've got a, uh, a brother from our father, a stepbrother. So he says to them, إِتُونِي بِأَخِنْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَبِيكُمْ Next time you come, you need to bring your stepbrother. In the next ayah, if you do not bring him next time, then I will give you nothing. If you are able to fulfill the task, you will receive it. If you don't fulfill the task, you will receive nothing. Also in Surah Yusuf, the king's vessel got lost. So Yusuf makes an announcement. We have lost the vessel of the king. وَلِمَنْ جَاءَ بِهِ حِمْلُ بَعِيرٍ Anyone who is able to find the king's vessel, we will give them a whole caravan worth of goods. We'll fill up their camel. وَأَنَا بِهِ زَعِيمٍ I am personally going to make sure that they receive the commission for finding the king's vessel. If you find it, you get the reward. If you don't find it, you get nothing. This is known as جُعَالَة with the ulama. Now, just like everything else, there are conditions. Condition number one. The actual work that needs to be carried out must be known. If I say to you, come to my house and paint a couple of the rooms, but leave the others, and I'll give you three or three hundred quid. Well, which rooms need painting? What colour do you want them? Do you want the ceilings doing? Do you want the skirting boards doing? So the detail must be clarified as to what actually needs to be done. Second condition, the nature of the work must be halal. So if a person says, go rob that bank, billah, I will give you a percentage, or I'll give you a, a, um, I will give you a, a salary for it. The third condition is that it has to be, now this is a difference of opinion between the ulama. Are you allowed to give a percentage or does it have to be something which is fixed? Now with the majority of the ulama, they have said that it has to be fixed. All kind of agent work has to be something which is fixed. Otherwise, there is gharar and ambiguity involved. For example, I've got a bunch of leaflets that need distributing. If you are able to distribute them, I will give you 10% of all my earnings. With the majority of the ulama, they say that this is not allowed because that person doesn't know how much you're going to earn. 10% could be £10, could be £1,000. He doesn't know. So the majority have said, no, he, the agent now, must receive a fixed rate. So he knows that this needs doing and this is how much he's going to get. The Hanabila have said it could be either. It could either be a fixed rate or it could be a percentage. And for me, that seems to be the correct view because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa uh, worked with the Yahud at Khaybar and that was based on percentages. The third condition or the fourth condition is that the time period the time period must be known but it's not necessarily restricted. Now this is one of the differences between Ju'ala and all other business contracts. When you've got employment contracts, when you've got rental contracts, when you've got uh, you know different types of contracts where you're in the Sharia most of them, if not all of them, stipulate a time period. When it comes to Ju'ala, there is no set time period, but there has to be a cut-off point. Okay, so 
to explain this further. These brothers, they come back to Egypt from Sham. Next time you come, you need to bring Binyamin with you. That could be in a week, that could be in a month, that could be in a year, that could be in 10 years. Next time you come, you will then receive the commission if you fulfill the task. So the time period has been left open. There isn't anything which is restrictive. However, there has to be a cut off. So basically, once they have done it, if they do it again, that's it. They don't get commission for that. So if they bring Binyamin a second time, a third time, fourth time, it's done now. Right, so uh, this is one of the differences between commission-based work, uh, in comparison to other contracts. Going back to the leaflets, I've got these leaflets. They need distributing. How long will it take for you to do them? He'll say two days, three days, maybe four days. So there is a cut-off period, but there is ambiguity on how long it will actually take. Two or four days, that is absolutely fine. But when it comes to rental, it has to be restrictive. When it comes to um, I don't know employment contracts, etc. When they are agreed upon, then we have to stick to what is there on the actual day itself. Bayt as salam uh, Istisna, and all these other different types of contracts, the time must be set. Here, it is not so rigid. The fourth condition, or the fifth condition, is that the prize must be specified. Now here, when we talk about specification, it's similar to what we just mentioned when it comes to time. I say to you, for example, if you are able to paint my wall, I will give you roughly between 100 and 100 and 150. I've not set it at 100, I've not set it at 150. I'll give you somewhere in that region, depending on how good your work is. That's fine. In Ju'ala, that's fine. In rental contracts and other contracts, it's Tisna and Bi'is Salam and all these different contracts, Mudaraba and all those kind of things. Uh, You can't have, if you do this, if you have it like that. No, it has to be known. Here in Ja'ala, the prize must be specified, but again, not so rigid. Now, the ulama have said, now this is the difference between the majority and the Maliki. If the prize is unknown, then there is no contract. And it becomes a promise. I say to a child, if you clear up the room, I will buy you a treat. What's the treat? He doesn't know. It could be a nice uh, chocolate muffin, or it could be a toy, it could be whatever it might be. That's now a promise. But if I say, if you clear up the room, I'll take you to the coffee shop, and I'll buy you whatever you want. Is the prize known? The prize is not known, it's not specified, but the child knows that there is a prize involved, and they have a rough idea as to what it would equate to. The Malikiyah have said, a promise is a contract. Wa'ad bin Muzim, this is well known with them. A promise is a contract. But the majority have said, promises are not contracts. Therefore, this is why there is a difference and why having uh, the prize mentioned is important uh, in the difference between the Malikiyah and the majority. Um, The sixth condition, I think this is the sixth one, uh, is that there can't be a down payment or an entry fee involved. Okay, so whoever can find the king's vessel, they will get to keep the king's vessel, but there's an entry fee of £10. You pay the £10, you do the commission-based work, are you going to find the vessel or not? We don't know. This is gambling. And this is haram. Therefore, there can't be any deposit or entry fee or down payment when it comes to commission-based work. The last condition um, is that they can't be, now, how do I word this? When it comes to normal contracts, if there is an agreement between person A and person B, that contract is binding, legally binding, and is binding with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our sharia. If I say to you, I want to buy your car, unfortunately this happens a lot, I want to buy your car, I come and inspect it, I give you an offer, We've agreed everything and I say to you, okay, I'll come back tomorrow. We'll complete everything tomorrow. That is now wajib. And you must fulfill it. And if you don't come back tomorrow, you're sinful. Because this is no longer a promise anymore. You have made an agreement. The only way that you can back down from this, if you ring the person and says, listen, Achi, I'm very sorry, I don't think I want to buy the car. Is that all right? If he says, yeah, 
it's okay, don't worry, I'll find someone else, then that's fine. But if he says, no, I want you to buy it, we made an agreement, I've kept it for you, etc., then it becomes wajib. That's when it comes to normal contracts, when it comes to trade and rental and employment and those kind of things. But when it comes to commission, there is no man, there's no mandatory mandate upon one another. If you paint the wall, I'll give you a hundred. If you don't paint the wall, I won't give you anything. So you say, yeah, fair enough, let me give it a go. If I can complete it, I'll complete it, I'll get some money. If I don't, then I'll just walk away from it. He knows that, you know that. The commissioner knows that and the commissioned knows that. Now this condition is important because it maintains a level playing field between the commissioner and the commissioned. And what I mean by that is that there is an element of profit and there is also an element of risk for both parties. The one that commissions, he says, I will give you the money if you paint my wall. Is he going to do a good job or not? If he does a good job, I've already said I'll give him about 100. If it's fantastic, it's going to be 150. So he now has a balance between profit and loss. But also, so does, and loss would then mean he'd have to do, get it done again probably. Uh, and also for the one that is commissioned, meaning he knows that if he does a good job, he's going to get 150. But he also knows that, you know what, if I'm not feeling well, if I don't show up, if I even do three quarters of the work, I won't be eligible for the payment. Therefore, this condition here that no one is um, obligated to complete, uh, it can't be forced on one another when it comes to commission-based work, is a very important condition when it comes to a ja'ala. The Maliki, uh, going back to what is a promise and a contract, have said, no, if you have told him to paint the wall, then he paints the wall. And you've got an agreement with him. Whether he completes it or not, you still need to pay him. Whereas the majority have said, no, 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 this is a promise. Sorry, this is, um, yeah, this is a contract. And the contract is based upon whether he completes it or not. The Maliki is saying, no, no, he receives some kind of payment even if he doesn't complete the work. These are the conditions. Um, the questioner was also asking, can we mix ju'ala, commission-based work, with employment contracts? And the answer is yes, as long as the details of the employment contract are clear and doesn't infringe on uh, the conditions of ju'ala. Uh, so, for example, a person works for a company and then he gets his salary, he works from 9 to 5, etc. All of those things in the employment terms are made clear. But they have also said to him, listen, if you can sell one or two of our items then we will give you a bonus from that. We'll give you a percentage on that. Or you will get a fixed uh, increase in your salary. And that, inshallah, is fine. And that is something which is uh, quite common when it comes to retail. This is Ja'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us fiqh of the religion and that he blesses us with whatever he gives us. And he allows us to have risk and income which is halal in a way that is beloved to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him sufficient for us uh, above the creation for our provisions. Hada wallahu a'la wa sallallahu ma'ala Muhammad.